I think that one of the greatest things about going to Penn State is our traditions, the amount of traditions that we have. I mean, we've been around since 1855. There's been so many wonderful things that have happened, and I think that's something that inspires that tradition is absolutely the Lion Shrine. Well, the Lion Shrine was a, a gift of the class of 1940, and it was dedicated during a halftime of a game in 1942. Animal sculptor Heinz Warnecke, who was um, educated in uh, the cities of Europe as an animal sculptor, came here and he was commissioned for the piece. It was done at a cost of a little over $4,000 at the time, made out of a 13-ton brick of Indiana limestone. Heinz Warnecke actually had it roughed out in Indiana and then he here finished off the finishing touches while students passed by so that you could talk to them about uh, what would become their symbol of Penn State pride. It's a tradition for students to take a picture at the shrine when they first come to Penn State and then take another picture in their cap and gown when they're graduating. I remember getting my picture taken um, on it with my brother when I came up to visit and I, every time I look at that picture it just it gives me a special feeling of I know I'm supposed to be here and I know that I want to share that with my family and friends. The Lion Shrine is important to me because it's, I think of it as the symbol of Penn State. And if I were to pick one thing that could represent Penn State more than anything else, I would pick the Lion Shrine. Through the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, it was, the, it was victim to countless attacks from other universities. Oftentimes before homecoming games, colleges would come out and paint the shrine. And the first uh, story that I would found on a collegian was actually way back in 1944. And it, the Collegian reported that it was hit by uh, vandals who had uh, thrown black uh, paint, a very heavy, d difficult paint to get off. Uh, they never did find the, uh, the vandals, uh, the paint cans and that were left in the bushes, but they, they suspected it was Syracuse because they were getting ready to play Syracuse and it was all black and black was one of the, the colors. Uh, the fraternities actually rose up against this, started sending their pledges out the night before big football games to guard the shrine. Pi Lamba Phi was a fraternity. They sent their pledges up to protect the shrine on Friday nights and Saturdays from about 8 o'clock or through midnight until 8 o'clock the next morning. Back in 1950, before a Temple football game, actually, there were four fraternity brothers who were guarding the shrine, and some students from Temple had come up to paint it, and they actually decided not to because they saw that it was being guarded and they were too afraid to paint it. You talk to people that, that were going to school here back then, they remember probably them or their friends protecting the lion before certain football games. I did it myself. I was a freshman in 1955. We lived across the hall, uh, across the way in McKee Hall, and uh, we had to go out there and protect the lion before certain games. I think that students originally started to guard the shrine because they didn't want a repeat of history. Um, they knew what happened before when they weren't vigilant when a rival school came. One of my favorite stories that I've ever heard about was back in the 1970s. Uh, a group of students basically had their arms connected around the shrine for a big game against Syracuse. Uh, and on the corner of Burroughs and Curtin, there was a staged car accident by Syracuse. Uh, the Penn State fans rushed to the scene to make sure everybody was okay, and Syracuse fans came out of the backwoods and threw paint on the shrine. I think rival students would want to vandalize the Lion Shrine because it's a symbol of Penn State, it's a symbol of our pride. They know how important it is to our school, and they know that it would definitely crush our school spirit. Nowadays, I don't think, it, I'm not sure it ever gets hit. People just don't do that like they used to. I mean, we make the big deal now of guarding it on homecoming weekends, uh, but it's turned into a party. Students come out, celebrate, have a nice little festival. There's free food, um, entertainment, and but more than that, it's just it brings together the Penn State community around the Lion Shrine um, to protect one of Penn State's oldest traditions. People get out there and celebrate and stay all night. The Lion ambassadors are out there and the cheerleaders are out there and a band's out there and entertaining. And it's a lot of fun, not to make the old tradition. But back in the old days, 50 years ago, people did take it a lot more serious than it is today. When I was a student and the first four years I was married, every time we went to the games, we were a very provincial university. We wore high heels, skirts, dresses. In fact, that was the focus of the game. What is so-and-so wearing and what does she have on? Where'd she get that? Uh, if you stood up to cheer, you were told to sit down, sit down in front. Well, that gets very boring. From what I understand, uh, team support was pretty low in Joe Paterno's first year in 1966. Although Penn State is known nationally as a football powerhouse, it, it really wasn't back then. Um, and so 
So we really wanted to bring up the students, um, get them excited about our homecoming football game. I wanted to raise spirit for the games. I just thought we were dull, provincial, and we needed to get behind the team and do something. It must have been an interesting time for Penn State and for the football team that there weren't people that wanted to go to the games. So I think it's kind of exciting that she took it upon herself to go out and try to get students to come to the game. It was the night before the big homecoming game between Penn State and Syracuse, and Supa thought it would be a good idea to round up um, a couple of the other coaches' wives and go paint the line shine. So the other two women were Sandra Welsh, whose husband left to be the head coach at Annapolis, then Virginia, and the other one was Nancy Radakovich, whose husband coached a lot of places after that. At any rate, we left a dinner party and drove up to the shrine, and Sandra Welsh and I just took the two gallons of paint and dumped them all over the lion. It was pretty, but it did the trick. So we got back in the car and Nancy was driving and she's shaking the car, it's going like a jackrabbit. And she said, we're gonna get caught. And I said, right, you don't have headlights on. So she put her headlights on, we weren't caught. Well, the next day I got a phone call about 10 a.m. from Joe in a fit. They're going to arrest the people who painted the lion. And I said, well, what, what, what are you telling me for? He said, you had orange paint on your coat. So then we had to go to a dinner that night and all of us are nervous wrecks. Um, we went into the dinner and some of the people were saying, who would paint our beloved shrine? I, oh, I, gee, I wouldn't know who would do that. Do you? No. At any rate, all of a sudden, one Mrs. George Dyke said, I'm glad they arrested those boys who painted the lion. Uh, unfortunately for the shrine, the, later that night, some Syracuse fans came together and threw oil-based paint, and really doused the shrine in oil-based paint. Well, they had come after us at two in the morning and used an oil-based paint. Remember, ours was water-based, so it could be washed off. And they got caught in the, in, in the act. Penn State's granite symbol now wears a coat of orange paint. It happened when three Syracuse students, using fire extinguishers, loaded with paint, sprayed the Heinz Warnicke statue at about 4 a.m. Friday. I never knew they did it that way. The three went to Beaver Stadium where they were surprised by campus patrolmen. Two managed to escape, but a third lost his pants on the fence and fell into the hands of campus patrol. I like to see the good in people, so I would think that they just wanted to do something fun and something somewhat scandalous to to say that you know Syracuse has been here and we've made our mark at Penn State. I think it's hilarious actually and I just love the fact that there's so much history tied into all of it um, and I really feel like that's why football games are so big now. They did get enraged and mad at Syracuse. We didn't win the game, it was very close, um, but it, uh, the next year the radio stations started guarding the lion the night before homecoming and then the Lion Ambassadors took over. But uh, what she really did was start a tradition. She started something greater than I think she, uh, she ever intended to do, but it is a tradition that holds to this day and it's something that is important to uh, all Penn Staters. Students guard the Lion Shine all night um, and they really make it into a positive atmosphere where you can have fun and still hold true to that tradition. I think there's definitely been good that's come from the vandalism on the Lion Shrine, as in inciting student body morale and excitement about football games or about Penn State spirit, and whether or not that was the intention of the people that vandalized the Lion Shrine, I think that's what's come out of it, and I think that's a good thing. It did change the way we cheered, so that was my mission and it worked.